Alrighty, I lost connection before, but we're back and live now. So, this is the Smokey, Smokey, Hi, Smokey. the one and only here, who actually had FIP and yeah. was able to fight that damn thing right out of his system. So, uh, what was the what was the timetable for that? So he had that he was diagnosed when and when uh, did he be officially become cured, as they said. So he, he was diagnosed uh, uh, with FIP, he had the full on symptoms of bloated belly, and we got him into UC Davis. He started the uh, drug trial, the first drug trial was called GC376, the mm -hmm. other drug, uh, and it was twice daily painful injections for 12 weeks. By the end of the first week, his uh, belly had shrunk, and he was sent home, and he completed the treatment in this house. And after 12 weeks, uh, he's been off the drug for a year and a half. So symptom free. And he had wet FIP. Right? Yeah, wet FIP. And how bad? And like, how uh, progressed was the belly's distension at that point? Like, how bloated was it at that? Well, oh, there's video of him on our website. Uh, he had uh, the full deal, the right? Full belly. Yeah. And, uh, the researchers there don't believe that you should remove the fluid yeah. because uh, it just comes back and yeah. actually the fluid there prevents more fluid from being formed, the, the hydrostatic pressure, yeah. they, they won't explode, they, they just get to this point. Yeah. Uh, and by removing the fluid you're taking protein out of the cat. Yep, and that's what we did. Uh, so, kind of. And people do remove it for the, the, to make the cat breathe easier, yep. you know, but uh, it, it just comes back. Yeah, it did, and that's exactly what happened to her as we did a, um, for Eris we did a uh, belly tap, as they called it, and we took fluid out, and then it immediately came back within the next two days. So, yes. and you're removing those proteins, like you said, and it yes. it may make the breathing situation much more manageable for them uh, at the time temporarily, but it's not yeah. a so permanent I know, solution. UC Davis, they only remove it if the cat's having trouble breathing. Exactly, because cats, even with wet FAP, can live for months uh, just in that condition. You don't really know. Yeah, exactly. So it's quite fascinating that he is, he is, so he is one of how many cats that have been um, cured of FIP? So uh, in his group there were 20, uh, 13 didn't make it, 7 are still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the 7 has had a relapse twice, but 6 of them have not, uh, and Smokey's one of them without wow. any relapse. That is, I mean it's, it's, it's crazy to know that we're still um, so... So far away, we have so much more to go, but to know that there are cats who have gone through this and been cured is yes, extremely I mean, profound. If we could raise enough money, then these drugs could be brought to market. We're still talking one or two years, yep. uh, but that's the only path forward, yep. and that's why we're trying. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. These are So these are more uh, of the bulls here from Vivi Pet, which are yes. pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah, You have one of every color I see here, right? <laughs> every color but pink. I don't like pink. Yeah. <laughs> So why don't you show me more? So we got more cats here. So this was um, the, your first encounter with FIP was with Miss Bean, correct? Who is Vanellas? Actually, my uh, first encounter was four years ago with a, a kitten named Peanut. Yes, Peanut. Yeah, uh, who I lost to FIP, and yes. that was the first time I'd heard of it. Uh, she died within a week. We euthanized her, and I thought I would never hear about it again. And yeah. last year, I adopted Miss Bean and Vanella, and Miss Bean was diagnosed, and that's got me into UC Davis and got me to create this nonprofit and now I'm a full fledged FIP P fighter. Warrior. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if you're a warrior. So this is um if you can see I don't know where she ran to. Vanella is a, it's, it's, it's so crazy how she's a clone of of Eris and and even Kyrie at this point where I don't think there is anything that says uh, Vanilla. Uh, yeah. She ran somewhere. We can hang out now that Smokey's here. Yes, and Smokey knows he's special because the cats are not allowed on the kitchen counter. Yeah, he's got his own uh, kind right of jurisdiction, is. huh? It's hard to yell at him. He's been through so much. I know. And what do you so what do you so what do you think his like? Um, he's got like a very very interesting look to him, right? He's got like a flame point kind of ears and stuff. Any is any idea of what kind of cat he is? Nope, nope. I just nope. know he was found in a field without a mother. He was really sick. Uh, he had a hard life even before he got to FIP. Wow. He is beautiful, though. My goodness. And great person. All these cats, as you were saying, they were all bottle fed, right? So they have great personalities. Yeah, that's vanilla. So that's vanilla. And as you guys know, if you have been following Eris, it looks so similar to our Eris. And um, even Kyrie, you got the same paws. Um, that was Miss, uh, Miss Bean's sister, who was the one who experienced the FIP. And, you know, it's just one of those terrible diseases that, um, you know, unfortunately, many of these cats deal with. But 
check out zenbuycat.org and you know there it's um, a great organization doing great things and you can support them by donating or purchasing any of the products that they are uh, affiliated with so so please check them out and help spread these videos share them like them anything this uh, hopefully this ha this house is just pure entertainment for you guys to look at and look at. <laughs> cat delivery on on the tower we're, we're installing a new fish tank oh there you go because <laughs> the cats like to watch the fish the, oh yes yes yeah. yes so where else should we walk around towards here oh so uh, let's go over to the living room yeah come this way so uh, what is this? Yeah, this is amazing. So we have 24 cats, and they generally get along, but uh, as they age and as things change, cats' personalities change also. Yeah. So this cat, Crumple, um, she usually lives in the kitten room. When we open it up for the cats to be out, we lock her up. She's happier locked up. Otherwise, she doesn't get along with the older cats. Sure. Um, so she lives out here. She's got a nice little... Uh, man, that's a... Is that like a... I've never seen one of those. This is like a... Specifically for cats or for bigger animals, or um, I don't know if specific, specifically for cats. We're trying to reach out to them to work with us because they make these really cool enclosures, yeah, different sizes, and they fold up really easily. Yeah, we have a cat tent that we were using when we were in New Jersey, and it's um, not as durable as this for that's for sure. But cat tents are a pretty amazing thing, and we, we love them myself yeah. and Allie. And then uh, here's our oldest cat, Puppy Seed. <laughs> And Puppy Seed has a, a, a list of afflictions, including lymphoma and arthritis and, and uh, hyperactive thyroid. Mm. But with enough pills, she uh, enjoys her life. How old is she? She's uh, 15. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Puppy Seed. <laughs> and uh, she likes to hang out by the fire. Uh, we keep our fire going 24 hours a day for the cats, even in the summer. They so like it, huh? She'll lay right up against there, and she, you'll think she's going to combust. She gets so <laughs> I, I, it's like humans. Uh, older people like you know the warmth. They have the warmth, yeah. yeah. And it's generally, it's I mean, it's generally nice here. I mean, hot usually though, right? More so than cool in Santa Barbara. Or yeah, this yeah. is in the winter. And nights can get cold, but you know, it's weird having the fire on in the summer. Yeah, it's not something you see very often. But if they like it, then I guess cats first, right? <laughs> And so how about the plants too? Do they like to get into the plant trouble here? Or no, are they pretty okay about... Uh... Um, we just learned uh, that we try to avoid plants with very skinny leaves because they chew those easily. Yeah. And then every so often they'll just decide to attack a particular plant and then the plant dies. Yeah. <laughs> and then we replace the plant. And there are many plants that are toxic for cats. And you there are many this. and we follow the list. I know yeah. the biggest Lavender, one I think is, is uh, one. lilies. Lilies, yep. And I didn't even know that even the spores of lilies are toxic. So... It's, you can't even bring them into the house. Yeah, that's yeah. There's a ton of stuff that you guys should, if you are cat owners, uh, and I believe even like during we experienced this like during Christmas time. You know, certain Christmas pines. There's you know, climber. Oh, climber climber right there. You want just want to make sure that you guys are up to date on knowing what what, what flowers and certain things are toxic towards cats because there are plenty of stuff that are. Hi, climber. All right, we can go upstairs now. Yeah, hold on. I just want to swap battery on my camera here. Okay. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. yeah, you can get my backpack if you don't mind. And then I'm just gonna pop another battery in here. Oh, that's fine. That Nothing of value in there. <laughs> that sounded terrifying. It did sound terrifying. Just give if, us one if, second, if guys. There's a glass. It's no longer glass. Yeah, exactly. I've got another battery in here. Let's see how I'm doing on a cart. I'm still live, so I, I apologize to anyone who's watching this, but technology, you, there's no real, no real way around it. <laughs> Let's see what my cord, memory card full. Great, so I got to memory card too. Glad I brought multiples of these things. I need one of those flying hover things that just... Yeah, just uh, the, the drone, right? Yeah. Yeah, my buddy's got a, a ton of them, but... Uh, do they work indoors? Some, I mean, they work indoors. I don't know if they're recommended with cats, probably, but... Uh, yeah, the cats would probably... Some of the film crews have tried using GoPros, and they set them up, and all the cats just smash them. Smash them, knock them yeah. down, right? Not having that. Great, okay. okay. All right, and we're back, guys. Okay. Oh, there's another one. Allie's here. Say hi, Allie. Hello. Let's do this. Yeah. There you go. Say hi, Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi, Allie. <laughs> I don't know if it's delayed. I'm sure it's not. 
Oh, maybe we can do this. Can I? No, I can't add her. She says hi. She she wanted to be here. Very much so. Okay. All right, Visitors so. are always welcome. Come on up Yeah, there. so we'll show, that, that'll definitely be on her uh, priority list, and she knows she has to do it. <laughs> See, and the carpenters built little Zimbai cat logo. Oh my and goodness. Tunnels. And more tunnels for them to get around and go through, whatever they need, right? Yep. So what is your favorite part of this house? Everything? Everything. I just like that it's alive, right? Yeah. Because even though I have 24 cats, they're never in one place. They're all over, like there's one up there, that's Jupiter Jones. Uh, there's Coffee Bean. Um, when I'm working, they're just kind of around. This is my home office, and this is Nutter. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Nutter. So, do they sleep with you? Uh, there's four, including Smokey sleeps with me. The four sleep with me, five sleep upstairs with Hito, 12 sleep in the kitten room, and the others kind of all. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I want to give a shout out to this. Uh, this is um, a cat tree made by a company called Square Paws. My goodness, those, those look amazing. Are those like available to buy? Yes, and he custom builds them all. Uh, they're not cheap, he understands that, but he builds amazing, uh, you know, uh, What's the tower? Eiffel Towers and Ferris wheels. And this one he made in my colors. Um, and it's oversized and the cats love it. And so how do people go about finding his stuff here? So he's on our website. He's one of our sponsors, squarepaws.com. Squarepaws.org. Um, and right now... Uh, dot com or dot org? Dot com. Dot com. Squarepaws.com. Yeah. Yes. And he, uh, he doesn't have a program where you get a discount. These are kind of pricey. But yep. uh, he's a, an amazing artist and he does support us monthly. So we like to support him, and yes. the cats love him. And these are amazing, and you will not, you would be hard pressed to find this anywhere. <laughs> I've never seen one of these on the market. And, and these last forever. Yeah, they look durable. Um, yeah, yeah, got you. This and there's probably a couple cats hiding here. <laughs> so who's this here? This is... Hi! Chocolate. 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 Hi, Chocolate. And Chocolate's uh, sister is Cheesecake, who's somewhere around. And again, some like this, she doesn't really like the younger cats, yeah. so she'll hang up here. The younger cats don't usually come up here. They, they can, yeah. but they kind of self-segregate. What is, uh, so what's the ages of the cats? Who's the youngest? And the oldest is obviously uh, 15. The oldest is right? 15, and that yep. would be uh, Puppy Seed. The youngest is Bokomo, who's... Uh, I lose track. Maybe yeah, it's true. 25. Eight, eight months old. Eight months, like yeah. That. Yeah. Well, it's always hard to know, too, if they come from a rescue as well, exactly how old they are. But they, they're pretty good at being uh, Yeah, they give accurate. us an estimated yeah. birthday. Um, and this is the upstairs bathroom. And oh, again, yeah. these tunnels go down into the cages in the garage and into the kitchen. Really? Um, My goodness. So when we installed the tub, it was a challenge to find walkways. We also build the tunnels so that we can reach all the places. We don't want to give a place for the cat. To just stay in there and not be able to get out, right? Yes. Brilliant. Because as it is, when we need to take them to the vet, we have to plan. Because if they know we're going to catch them, yeah. I'll, I'll never catch them. <laughs> they can get away. Yeah, the uh, cats are pretty uh, keen about knowing when that stuff's going down, too. At least ours are. Man, this is so... This whole, like, uh, when you were building this, did you know that you wanted the, the uh, holes in mind and stuff? Like, was that, like, was that a later addition, or was that, uh, it, it seems like, I mean, I, so I know nothing like, about construction or architecture. Yeah, originally the house was built without catwalks, and then as we, for 20 years, we've been incorporating them. So, yeah. when I actually added the tub seven years ago, that's when I put these in. Oh, okay. Um, the bridges, you know, when the carpenters have free time, we, we look for a place to build something different. Like this, this is a curved wood bridge, this one over here, and they're hard to build, so the carpenter yeah. is like a challenge. So part of that is that. We never want to build the same thing twice. Yeah, and the cats probably like the variety of it, is what I'm imagining what it is. Oh, look at that. You get, I mean, I've, I've seen these obviously from the video before, but you've got these spaces that are through the, uh, uh, for the holes for them to go to the other room. It's the teeth that scratch the back of the cat. When they oh, the yeah, yeah. So, and they, they, I'm sure they use that quite frequently, huh? Yeah, you can see how dirty the teeth are from the back of the cat. Oh my god. So they definitely use it. Yeah. So is, where would you say the, the cat's favorite room is? Is it the kitten room or is it just everyone's individual has their own? The kitten room is because there's 12 of them that have uh, 
we put them there at night yeah. because they're too destructive. They run around too much and they would never sleep. Yeah. Uh, so they think of that as their safe spot. So sure. you, when I feed them at night, they just run in, I close the door, and yeah. it's easy. <laughs> and then the others just, you know, spend all over the wherever they want to sleep. So do uh, do any of them go outside into that back that gazebo area? Is that enclosed or is that no? Uh, none of them go outside. We we've, we've been working on a way to create an outdoor space, but literally there's so many windows and skylights like that up there. Yeah, um, they get plenty of sunshine and they love to watch the birds. And I think most of them wouldn't go outside. Yeah, because they've been raised indoors now. Exactly, and it's kind of. Big and scary. Yeah, yeah. That's it's definitely a process. We, and I, you know, there, there are, there's a place for cats outdoors. Uh, I totally get that. But in a city, uh, I think the average life of a cat in a city is under four years. Yeah. Uh, and outdoors and indoors is 15. So yeah. It's just too many cars and yeah. um, and bad things. I think that there's a, a nice balance. Like for us, myself and Allie, we take our cats on a leash and we walk them. And that's the only time they ever go out yes. or they go into the cat yes. tent. But, um, you know, outdoor cats, indoor outdoor cats, it's like you said, they're the life expectation is much smaller. And, and, uh, and there are a lot of, you know, Dr. Peterson makes a point that cats belong outdoors. Sure. So when you see a cat in the wild, it doesn't really need saving. Yeah. Um, he said, they're doing just fine. Most of the time, they're doing just fine. Yeah. That said, if I see a kitten outside, I want to save it. Yeah. So it's kind of hard. It's Yeah, it's that weird conundrum that we're in. I mean, and, and there are cats that are outside that do need saving. If they're yes. sick and they've got, you know, like if there's ear mite infestation in their ears yes. or they're so doing I, something. So I, I love these people. I can't believe they do it. These, these uh, I don't know, the initial trap, neuter, and release. Trap, yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, TNR. They do amazing work. Yes. Because, you know, they... Uh, trap the cat, they fix it so it's not going to have any babies, they, they give it all the medical, and they release it, and, yep. and the cat is doing well. Yeah, and I think that's probably the best thing you can do if you ever come into contact with a, a stray cat, is contact someone who is TNR, and you can tell if they've been neutered, is if their ear is clipped more often than Correct. not, if they have Correct. that little uh, uh, clipping on their ear. Yeah. Yeah, so this has been, this has been amazing, guys. If, like, uh, Peter, anything else you want to talk about Zen by Cat with anyone here? Like... Anything that we you probably said already in the Instagram video, but yeah, we already said it again. I don't want to yeah. repeat myself. Exactly. But, yeah. So but, just check out if you can Zen by Cat. Well, tell them how they can find you once again. And um, so yeah. our main web, yeah. web page is zenbycat.org, and from there you can go to uh, Cat TV and, and check out our twenty four hour streaming TV. You, cat stuff is our store online. Uh, buy our branded products. Support our our companies that support us, like Fussy Cat, uh, the Cat Ball, and others, um, and help us grow. How about that documentary that you made? Is that available to the public, or is that still private? No, no, that's on our website. Uh, there's several documentaries, but the the, the seven and a half minute one that I like the most yes. that talks about FIP and us uh, is on our website. Great. So if you visit zenbycat.org, you can watch it there, and it's a phenomenal video. We screened it at our, our screening of um, at Eris, and uh, please support Zen by Cat and everything they do. Uh, Peter's an amazing person who's been a part of our our production here, and we we hope to continue this amazing relationship. Right. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, guys.